Here's a difficulty with the Arduino delay function. The chip can't do anything useful while it's waiting. And that includes processing inputs and responding to events. So let's look at a possible solution. We're going to look at the lecture sample code from the course site down at the responsive delay example within the event loop section. And I have it over here in a Tinkercad sketch, which includes a speaker on pin 5 and a push button switch wired to digital input 3. So let's first just observe what happens with this. And this time, if I click the switch, it truncates the sequence. It interrupts the siren. So let's look at how this is achieved. If we look in the body of the loop function, what we see is that play siren is called um, normally, and then after that it plays silence. So it seems clear that play si siren is somehow ending early when the button is pressed. If we look down into play siren, what we see is there's a loop that will do the three cycles of the siren, playing uh, a tone on the speaker and then uh, another tone that's lower. And we have this new function, con delay, which is defined within this file. And the idea is it's a conditional delay. It'll delay for 300 milliseconds unless something else happens. And if that something else happens, then it will return true. So if the expression with the if is, if con delay returns true, then apply the return operator. And in this context, a return operator will simply return immediately from play underscore siren. So let's look inside of con delay. Con delay is a function that takes an integer number of milliseconds to wait and returns a Boolean, true or false. So basically what's happening inside here, there's a loop that is running very, as fast as possible, sampling the millisecond clock. Every time it runs, it reads the clock, sees how many milliseconds have elapsed since the last time it ran, and using that to keep track of elapsed time. And then that's effectively re-implementing delay, but the key is inside of that, there's an expression which also reads the switch. So in this case, we have a, an active low switch input. There's a pull-up resistor, so when it's pressed, it goes low. When that digital read of the switch equals zero, that means the switch has been pressed. What happens is then the con delay function will immediately re return true as fast as possible, really within microseconds of the signal going high. And then it, or I'm sorry, going low. If the loop completes, if the full time elapses, then uh, it'll return false to indicate that the full time elapsed and it returned normally. In that case, inside of the siren function, the loop will just execute to the end. There is a little subtlety to what's happening inside of the loop in con delay. The millis function returns a 32-bit unsigned integer based on the hardware clock, and that is the number of milliseconds elapsed since the chip was turned on. That, is a, that can roll over. It takes about 50 days. That would be the maximum value would be on the order of 4 billion and 4 million seconds divided by 86,400 seconds a day ends up being about 50 days. So it's always worth handling that case correctly in case your Arduino program happens to run for a very long time. What we'll see here is that the interval calculation is keeping track of the previous read and doing a subtraction. And it turns out that in the 32-bit math, that that handles the wraparound correctly, it, even if the clock overlaps and goes from the maximum value back down to zero, the subtraction will always produce the number of milliseconds that has elapsed since the last time the loop ran. That is used then to compute a descending count of milliseconds. The other thing to note is that this loop can run many, many times without millis changing. Uh, the, the loop is running quite quickly. These operations are very fast, so millis might return the same value many times in a row, the value of interval will just be zero in every case, and milliseconds simply won't count down. But in every case, the, the digital read is happening at the maximum possible rate for the lowest possible latency on the switch being pressed. Now this is a very general sort of structure that can be extended. Inside this loop, there could be a lot of other actions that are all pulled at very high rate, either to calculate some kind of output value, do some other kind of processing, it can turn your program inside out to include a lot of sort of real-time operations inside some kind of con delay structure. But this is a way at least of thinking more explicitly about the flow of time in your program, taking charge of the delay operation so that you can accomplish something useful while it's running. And that is sort of the very first example of what we might call event loop programming, where the idea is there is some loop inside the program that is simply processing events 
And then as things occur, like time passing, then different actions are taken.